Hello YouTube, this is just going to be a in-depth DIY on how to build your own heating mantle control. It's going to be a step-by-step, -step. hopefully you can follow along and build yours with me as we go. Um, first I'm going to go over the schematic here a little bit because I'm not building the whole thing, I'm just building the important part of the circuit, the hardest part for you to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it step-by-step. -step. So we will only be building in between the blue triangles here. It's not going to take too long. Like I said, you only need five parts. So, what I would recommend you do right now is pause this video and draw this schematic. Um, something similar to it at least so that you can follow along and highlight as you go so that you uh, so that you can remember what you've done. Yada yada, like I've said before. Also, one thing to keep note of is uh, the triac here. It is important which way you connect it. So just remember that this one is the gate. This one is A1. And this one is A2. Write that down. Um, the pinout is right here. Pin 1, 2, and 3. Pin 1 is A1. Pin 2 is A2 and pin 3 is G. <coughs> this is important. You have to get that right. Um, you're going to be following along anyway, but just keep that in mind. Um, everything else, because it's alternating current, it doesn't matter which way you hook it up. They're all, the polarity doesn't matter. So that being said, let's get into some of the parts you're going to be needing. First off is going to be a potentiometer. It's rated for 250 kilo ohms. Uh, you can find those on eBay for about 75 cents each, or two for a buck fifty. I got two for a dollar fifty. You're gonna need a triac. Um, triacs are going for about about a dollar each. I got five of them for like four fifty. <coughs> this one's number is a B T A. 16. It's a 16 amp or 16 amp rated triac. Um, it's oversized because we're planning to be running maximum of 10 amps, and that way we won't burn out the triac. Hopefully, you're going to need a 0 0.1 microfarad film capacitor rated for 250 volts. It can be ceramic. It can be film. It can be any type of capacitor. As long as it is 0 0.1 microfarads and it is not electrolytic. Not one of the little black round ones like these here. You don't want those. Um, the next part you're going to need is a diac, which is this little guy here. Um, its part number is DB3. And it is a DIAC, so you could look that up on eBay. I got 10 of them here for $1.50. And you're going to need a 3.3 kilo ohm 1 watt resistor. You need to get about 10 of these for $2.50. Uh, just take note of how I have the, my pieces bent up here. It doesn't really matter. It's just taking, taking some space. It's going to help us out along our way. Another optional piece, you can solder it all together point to point if you're following along close enough, um, but a breadboard really helps and I'm going to be putting it together on a breadboard right now to show you how it's done. These are going for about a dollar each on eBay. So to start here what I've done is I have mounted a triac to a heat sink and I've gone ahead and I've soldered it to the breadboard somewhere in the middle near the edge. <laughs> and the first thing we're going to do is take the diac, and it goes from the gate, if you note from your uh, the schematic that you drew up. Pull mine out here. So from the gate, which is pin 3, you're going to count over from the left, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to put the diac in front of it, and drop it down in there like that. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's right in front of pin 3, and it extends out almost to the end. Not quite. So flip that over here, 
solder that in quick. So now that we got the diac put in, I'm just going to fold these uh, wires out of the way for now. We'll cut them all off at the end. So that next to the diac, if you notice here, um, put this down out of the way. So off of the diac that we just soldered in onto the gate of the triac, it goes through the capacitor to the neutral side. And we're also going to note that A1 goes to neutral. So what we're going to do here is A1 is pin 1 on the triac, which is on the left hand side of the circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our capacitor and from the diac we're going to go to the left just to make things simple and we're going to pop it in right at the end of the triac there like that. I'm going to go ahead and solder that in too. So now that you have the the capacitor soldered in beside the diac there, what you're going to want to do is connect the one side of the capacitor to the end of the diac there. Let's do that with a little bit of solder. What we did there, I don't know if the camera will see it, but we just bridged the gap between the two there. So now we're going to flip the circuit back over. So now that we've put the diac in and the and the capacitor that is going to the neutral side of the circuit what we're going to do is take pin A1 which is the farthest pin to the left and we're going to basically run that over to a neutral rail which I'm going to do now so make sure you remember when you flip it over everything's reversed right so pin 1 is going to be the farthest one on this side we're just going to connect to it with some solder. And it'll connect around something like that. I'm going to bridge the gaps in between all of those joints there in a second. It's going to take a second. That's the nice thing about these breadboards is you can bridge the gaps like this and you don't need any wire at all. You can just connect all of your joints with just solder and when you're done you have a nice finished circuit board alright so that is our neutral rail so we go over to our schematic here again The neutral rail, the diac, and A1 is finished. So we'll cross this out, cross that out, the capacitor, and the whole neutral rail is done. So now what we're going to do is start on the line voltage side of the, of the circuit. So obviously, as you can see here, off the other side of the diac, it goes through the 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. So what we're going to do... Take our 3.3 kilo ohm resistor, and we're going to put it in right beside the other side of the diac. A nice little bend in it here in the end to hold it in place. And we'll solder that. In. We're also going to bridge the gap between the resistor and the end of the diac and the end of the other capacitor.
Make sure you don't connect the points in between the resistor there. So now we got the resistors done. The next thing beside the resistor is the potentiometer. So what we're going to do is put that in the circuit board. Sometimes these holes are a little bit small. You might benefit from uh, drilling the holes out a little bit first. But if you gently work it in, you can get them through. So, from the schematic here, once again, the resistor is done. Notice on the side here of the, uh, the potentiometer, there's the little arm comes out. That's because the way a resistor works is basically you got two points and a wire that goes all the way around. And you have a third point with an arm that touches somewhere along this wire. The farther you move the wire this way, or the farther you move the arm that way, the longer the distance between here is and the more resistance you have. So it's basically, it is a variable resistor. So in the picture here, you can see one end of the potentiometer is directly connected to the other, the, uh, to the center pin of the potentiometer. So what we're going to do is basically just solder the other side of the resistor directly to the first two pins of the potentiometer. And the last thing you're going to want to do, i get the potentiometer out of here now. The last thing you're going to want to do is connect pin A2, which is pin 2 of the triac, up to line. And that'll be your line leg. Then to wire this thing in, all you have to do is take your black wire from the mains of your house, run it through a fuse, run it through a switch, run it through an amp meter, then run it through your heating mantle, and into the line side of this circuit and then just connect the neutral side to the white wire and it's that simple so what we're going to do is take the circuit and we're going to connect up the line side so like I said from the other side of the potentiometer here we're going to make the line rail. And from pin 2 of the triac. So we'll come up from the middle here. Bridge that. Check to make sure that all of the points are connected properly. And then go ahead and cut off all of the extra wires that are left on to the end here. And that's it. Don't forget to label it. You have one side that is line. And the other side is neutral. Now... 
if this potentiometer here, if it turns down the power when you turn the potentiometer up, um, basically what that means is you have to flip the potentiometer around the other way. Now I know that it would be stupid to have the potentiometer facing the other way, so what you can do is basically on the, the wiring on the back of the circuit board to the potentiometer, you can reverse that. Or in the case like my other one where it's physically wired off of the circuit board, it's not soldered directly to it like we've done here. So I could just flip the wires around and it would do the same thing. Because what it's doing is making the resistance basically as I showed you in the picture, instead of it being connected between here and these being the measurement, it would be connected between here and this would be the measurement. So it would be the complete opposite. So if you flip it around the other way, then um, the potentiometer will turn up the power when you turn it up. Keep this in mind when you first go to test it. You don't want to burn anything out right away off the bat. So what I would recommend doing is putting the potentiometer in the center position before you turn it on for the first time. Cross your fingers and hope for the best. Um, watch the amp meter. If it jumps up real high right away, unplug it real quick or turn the switch off real quick. Um, and try to put the potentiometer the other way and turn it back on. Um, another thing I'll note is if you don't have it, if you don't have a load across, like if you don't have a heating mantle hooked up, then it's not going to draw any power, obviously. So you have to have the heating mantle hooked up, otherwise the potentiometer, like adjusting the voltage, isn't going to make the dial move at all, if you know what I'm saying. So hopefully this helped. Um, if you need any more help with the circuit that you just built, if you need to, uh, help installing it or figuring it out, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask to leave a comment in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.